recording. Hi, my name is Ashley Larkins, and today I'm going to be talking about restraints. There are three categories of restraints. The first one is verbal. Our verbal can be our voice, so when we tell the horse, whoa, we are using a verbal restraint. We can also use a stern voice to tell the horse that he's being naughty or bad. What we don't want to do is yell or scream any profanity at the horse. That's not a good version of a verbal restraint. Another restraint that we could use is a chemical restraint. A chemical restraint would be something like ACE or Demosedin that would, we would use for a horse if we needed to clip him or do a veterinarian procedure on him that he's not letting us do. The third category of restraint is physical or manual restraints, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. First of all, I'd like to go over some safety. As far as safety goes, I'm gonna have my handler, Morgan, stand on the same side of Bolito as me, so that if we run into any problems with his back legs, she can pull his head towards us, moving his hind end away from us and getting us out of picking range. The first physical restraint that we're going to talk about is here on the horse already, and that's a halter and a lead rope. This is our basic form of a restraint for the horse, and we want to make sure that our halter is properly fitting. We don't want the halter to be so low on the horse's nose that it's going to damage the sensitive structures on the, face, on the horse's nose here. We also don't want it to be so high that the buckles here on the sides are hitting his cheekbones. So we want to make sure that we have a good fitting halter. If our horse needs a, um, a bigger restraint than just a halter and a lead rope, we can use a chain shank, which is a lead rope with a long chain attached to it. Now with this, we want to make sure that we aren't jerking down on the horse or that we don't tie the horse with this. Also, we don't want to apply any of our restraints while the horse is cross-tied. We want to have a handler to help us. So with the chain shank, I'm going to apply it through the side right here. I'm going to go up diagonally with my chain, and then I'm going to cross over to the other side of my horse, and I'm going to go up through this one here, and then I'm going to pull it up and attach it at the top here. We attach it up at the top here so that it isn't down here by the horse's face where it could hurt him here. We also want to point the buckle out so that there's no damage here to the horse's face. As you can see, with the chain shank, I wrapped it over and looped it over his nose band. This is for two reasons. The first reason is that we don't want the a chain to apply directly to his nose because that could be damaging to him as well and cause him harm. The second reason is that we don't want the chain to be able to slip down his nose and hence interfere with his mouth or nostrils or the sensitive part of his nose. The next form of restraint that we can use is a form of restraint that some people use to lead breeding stallions with. However, we don't use it to lead any horses here. What it is is a lip chain. You can also use a lip twine for the horse, which is sometimes better and can be easier than the chain on the horse's gums. What we're going to do is we're going to apply this similarly to how we put on our chain chain. We're going to put the chain down underneath here, and then we're going to attach it up through here. And if our chain is long enough, we would like to, again, attach it up here so that it's no interference down here. What we're dealing with here is a chain that isn't going to be quite long enough if I attach it up here. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go ahead and place the chain down here with the buckle again facing out. Here I can tell that it's far enough from the horse's mouth that it's not going to interfere with him. So I'm going to walk back around here and I'm going to place the chain in my fingers and then I'm going to gently lift his nose. I want to be very careful that I don't get his teeth and that I get it up on his gums underneath his lip. Then it's also very important that I pull down and not up because this keeps the pressure applied on our lip chain. Now, when this is a kind of a harsh method here, so I don't want to jerk on him or at all. I just want to apply the gentle pressure. Now, when I go to take off the lip chain, I'm going to make sure that I come in here with my hand and remove it so that it doesn't go onto his teeth and clatter against his teeth. Then I can come back over here and I can remove this and take it off. It's very important with both the lip chain and the lead shank that I don't let the excess fall on the ground where the horse could step on it or cause other issues. My previous horse, Bolito, who was helping us out, and my handler, Morgan, had to go see the vet. So now I'm going to be using Marco as my demonstration horse, and this is Lynn, my new handler. So my third method of restraint that we're going to talk about is the twitch. So the twitch comes in three forms. We have a rope twitch or a chain twitch that's going to look much like this, a long wooden 
um, stick attached to a rope or a chain. I have here a rope one today, which can twist both directions, and it's less likely to pinch the horse's nose. A humane twitch, which is our third form of twitch, is used by placing metal clamps over the horse's nose and then attaches back to the halter. So it's a hands-free version of the twitch. So with the twitch, I'm going to place my hand through, leaving my pinky out. And I'm also going to keep it on the very tips of my fingers. This is for easy application. I don't want to fiddle around with it when I get it, so I don't want it to fall down my arm. Or I don't want to take a long time when I grasp the horse's nose and have to try to like pull it up on his nose. So I want it just ready to go here. I'm also going to keep it tucked up in my armpit like you see here. That's because this is very heavy and if it were to hit my horse or my handler or me, it would probably be painful. So I don't want it to become a weapon in which I can be hit or my handler or horse. When we're applying the twitch, the first three to five minutes are a distraction period and then the next 10 to 15 are an analgesia stage in which they release nice um, chemicals in which the horse just makes the horse kind of feel good. And then 12 to 15 minutes are what we call the blow stage. If you live this twitch on for that long, then you can cause severe damage in the horse's nose and it becomes very painful for him. So if you're going to use the twitch in any form, you want to make sure you have everything ready to do whatever you need to do with them once the twitch is applied. So I'm going to apply the twitch now with my fingers placed very shallow, my pinky out. I'm going to come up to my horse and I'm just going to kind of pet him, let him know I'm here. I don't want to jump up and startle him. And I'm going to grasp his nose. And I'm going to just slip that over, and then I'm just going to twist, keeping it in my armpit. And I'm going to keep twisting and holding on to his nose until I know it's nice and tight. I'm going to apply it all the way until I can let go. And then I'm going to untwist it, pull it off his nose, and then I'm going to make sure I rub his nose just to get that circulation going back in there. So with the twitch... You want to make sure that you get it tight enough that it's not going to slip off his nose because then that's going to just teach the horse some bad habits. All right, so another method of restraint that we can use is called the shoulder roll. Now, the shoulder roll is hard because you're going to use your hand, and your hand is going to get very tired quickly. So this is something that you're going to use just very quickly. Like if your horse needs an injection and the vet's trying to give him and he's being a little squirmy, you can use this. Um, what it's going to do is just kind of distract the horse for a couple minutes and freeze him. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to come up to him on the skin right here in front of his shoulder blade, just right here where it's nice and loose. I'm going to grab a piece of skin and twist inward. So if it's not uh, loose enough, I can have my handler move his head a little bit towards me to get some looser skin. Another important thing to keep in mind is that I have short fingernails because otherwise I'm going to hurt him. So I'm going to grab a piece of skin and I'm going to roll in until he leans away from me. And you see that he kind of took a step away from me with that. When doing the shoulder roll, I'm going to face my handler in the front of my horse because just in case my handler had an issue with the horse and he reached back to grab me or bite me, I want to be aware of what his head and his face are doing. The last restraint that we can use is what we call a leg lift. So now a leg lift is going to be used, for instance, if you are trying to bandage or clip another leg and he keeps trying to pick it up, won't hold it still. So if he won't leave the hoof on the ground, like let's say someone's trying to bandage his left front leg and he won't leave it on the ground, then I'm going to pick up his right front leg. Now it's very important to remember that you are going to always pick up a front leg, never a hind. They're much stronger than you are and you're not going to be able to safely hold up a hind without getting kicked. So if you're trying to bandage or clip a hind leg and you're having issues, you're going to pick up the front leg on the same side. The horse is less likely to balance on two lateral feet than he is to balance on two diagonal. So I'm going to approach this just like I would if I was picking out his hoof. So I'm going to pat him on his shoulder and just let him know I'm here. And then I'm going to run my hand down and pick up his leg. I'm going to use two points of contact, one on his cannon bone and one on his hoof. And then I'm going to lift up if I need more of a restraint. And then when I set down his leg, I'm going to do it very gently. It's important to remember when you're having someone lift a leg that you need to be in constant communication with the person helping you hold. In conclusion, we have talked about a few ways of physically restraining or manually restraining your horse. 
Don't get confused by this lingo though, because we are not physically holding the horse down. This is only serving as a brief distraction for the horse. He's much stronger than you are and you're not gonna physically hold him down. It's important to remember safety in all of these steps. When applying the restraint, you never want to have your horse cross-side, you always want a handler, and you and your handler need to be in constant communication. I'm about to use the clippers, I'm about to inject him, so that your handler is aware that something's about to happen and the horse might have a negative reaction. When applying all of these, you want to work in a calm and confident manner. You don't want to apply anything quickly or aggressively, but you do want to act confidently. 